Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to filter some data when we click on a button. So right here, when I click this load countries, it's going to pull data from the GeoNames API and display it inside of a table right here. And then I can filter this data through any way that I want. But the way that I've chosen is to filter with the option of only European countries, and it will only show European countries. And I can click back to all countries and I'll switch back to all countries and population greater than a million and you can see that we only get displayed those countries with population greater than a million okay so let's get to work okay so the first thing I'm going to do is CD into the location where I want this project to be so it's going to be in my examples folder and then I'm going to clone a repo and this is just a basic angular 2 boilerplate Okay, so this is where my new project is, and I'm going to rename this folder uh, to filter. And then I'm also going to add this folder into my text editor. So now we've added our new project into my text editor. And then finally, I can go back and I can CD into my new folder called filter. And I still need to download my NPM packages, so I'll just type yarn. And for this, you can either type yarn or npm install. And it's going to pull down all of our packages that we need to get the project running. So while that's going, I'm going to hop back into my text editor. And the first thing I'll do is I'll go into my CSS file. And I'm just going to add one more line here at the bottom. So this is going to just be some simple CSS for our filter by class. And that's it. I'll save that. So next up, I want to add a couple new files. We don't need that many, only a couple. So in our home folder, I'm going to add a new file, and this is going to be called country.ts. So this is going to be an interface that we'll add later. Close that. And another new file to hold our service, which is going to be called geoname.service.ts. So next up is I'm going to add some HTML to our home.template.html file. And for this one, I'm just going to copy and paste this in. So you can either copy this from the resources folder or copy this over right here. So first we have a table and it's going to be bordered, striped. When we hover over it, it's going to display some CSS. Then we have our header. Then we have six titles for our header right here. And then below that, we're going to have our table body and we're going to iterate over country and countries. That's going to display our country name, code, capital, area and square miles. And we're using a number filter here, which is going to add commas and also get rid of if we have a dot zero. So it'll just make it a whole number. Okay, so now what you need to do is create a GeoNames account. So you just want to create a new account, and this is actually going to be in GeoNames Home. So I'll click that, and then it's going to be Login, which is over here. So click Login, and then you need to create a new account. Authorize the new account, and then once you've created the new account, then you have to go over to this Manage Account page. Okay, and click here to click to enable free web services. And then you'll be able to access their API. So it'll look like this. So it'll say API geo names slash country info JSON equals username and then put in you, your username. And then when you go there, it's going to give you this printout. And this is what we'll be accessing. And we're going to be using the continent, population, area and square miles, country code, and continent name. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually I want to create my interface first. So in order to do that, we're going to export interface and I'm going to call our interface iCountry. The country code that we just looked at is of type string. The capital is a string the area in square miles, excuse me, area in square kilometers is of type string. The population is of type string. 
I gotta fix this up here. Should be a semicolon. And the continent name is also of type string. Now let's create our service. So the first thing I'll do is I'll import everything that I need. So I've imported injectable, our HTTP, and the response uh, are observable. I country from our interface, as well as some RxJS operators. Below that, first I need to declare that our service is injectable so that we can use it in components. And then I can say export class and I'll name this class genome service. Up at the top here, I'm going to create a private URL, which will be our endpoint. And it's of type string. And then right here, you're going to want to put your username at the end of this. Next, we need to define our constructor. And our constructor is going to contain a private variable of the HTTP. And I like to prefix this with an underscore. Now let's create our first method. And this method is going to allow us to grab all of the countries. And this is going to be of type observable. And it's going to be an observable of an array of our countries. And then I'll say return this dot underscore HTTP. And then we're going to make a get request to the URL that we just defined up above. And then we're going to take that response and map it. And we'll make sure that what we get back is of type response. Okay, and then I'll just copy over this I country to make sure that what we get back is of type I country. And then we'll convert it into JSON. And then here we need to attach dot geo names because the object that we get back is called geo names. And you can see that right here. See, we're getting back geo names, which is an array of objects. So we need, so that's why we're using dot geo names. Okay. And then we'll say dot do in order to log out the data that we get back. So, and that we can uh, display this in our console. And then we meet, need to make sure that we catch any errors. And then we'll just log out the error. And then we'll return our observable throwing the error. So in our app module file, the first thing we need to do is add in our HTTP module because it wasn't added in our boilerplate. So we'll make sure that we import that. And then I need to add this to our list of imports. Then I'll go down here and I'll make sure that we import our geoname service and I'll copy this over to our providers. Okay. So now let's open up our home component.ts file and we'll go ahead and add a button. So the first thing I'll do in my home component file is import our geoname service as well as our iCountry interface from country. So with that done, I'll add a couple of new properties here to the top of my class. The first one is going to be countries, which is going to be an array of iCountry. And this is what gets displayed in our template, as well as an error message for string. Then below that, I'm going to add our load countries method. Excuse me, actually, I need to add a constructor, right? So right here, I'm going to say constructor. And here I'm just going to make a private reference of underscore geoname service, which is of type geoname service that we imported right here. Okay. Now inside of our load countries method, I'll reference my geoname service, and then we'll call our get countries method that we created on our service. And then I can subscribe to the results. So inside of our subscribe, we're going to get back our countries and you can call this whatever you want. You can call this results or data, but I'll call this countries. And then we're going to assign it to this dot countries is equal to the country's response. The second argument of our subscribe is an error object and assign it to this dot error message. And then we can just say this is a generic of type any. 
Okay, so I'll save that and now everything is set up. All we need to do is add our button. So let's hop back over to our template and you this so this country is right here is this countries and it displays our data and then gets shown right here. So at the top here is where I'm going to add a click event for our button. So I'll just add this right below our H1 and it's going to look like this. So we'll just have a button. It'll be a large button. And then when we click this button, it's going to call our load countries method. Okay. So now let's go ahead and test out our application to see what it looks like so far. Okay, good. And we get this loaded up. So I'm just going to click this load countries button right here. And after about a second, we get all of our countries being displayed in our table. Okay, cool. So now the next step is to add in our filtering mechanism. Okay, so right below this load countries, I'm going to add a new row. So this is going to be a table and it's just going to display the three buttons that we're going to use in order to filter. And I've also added a style here to give us some space. And we're only going to display this div if there are countries. Okay, and I'm just going to paste these in. Then I need to add one more div here at the bottom. For each one of these, we'll have a click event. So then we'll have a check within our filter by method to see what has been passed. And then when it is passed, we'll perform some action either to display all the countries only the European countries or countries with a population greater than 1 million people. Now in my home component, I'm going to create this filter by method. Okay, so let's go back into our home component. So we'll say filter by, and this is going to take a filter. And this is actually going to be a string. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can use an if else statement very easily, or you can use a switch statement. So for this example, I will use a switch statement. So inside of our switch statement, we need to check which filter has been sent. In the case that we've sent the string all, we're going to display all the countries. And for this one, I'm actually going to come back to in a little bit. So we'll just log out all countries clicked. And when we're using a switch statement, we need to make sure that we break out of it. Otherwise it will execute all the code below. So over here in the case that somebody has pressed Europe, we're going to take this countries. So our array of countries, and then we're going to filter it. So we'll say this dot countries dot filter. So with the filter, the first parameter is what we're filtering for. And we're going to represent that by country. And then we can use a Lambda here and then we're going to return country dot the continent name. And then we'll make sure that we set this to lowercase. And then we can use a newer ES six method called includes. And then we'll just say Europe and that's it. So if the continent name includes the word Europe, then we're only going to display those countries. I'll make a log here, show only European countries, and then I'll break out. And finally, in case somebody has clicked the case pop, we're going to set this dot countries equal to this dot countries dot filter. We'll take in our country and then we're going to return. Now remember the country population is of type string. So what we need to do is we need to parse that and turn it into an integer. So we can say parse int and then pass in our country dot population is greater than a million to so only display those populations with countries greater than a million. And I'll create a log message here and then I'll break out of this. Okay. So now I'll go back up to all. If we were just to set this to this countries, this dot countries equals this dot countries. So something like this, what would happen is when we click on one of these other buttons, whether it's Europe or pop, it's going to create this array of this dot countries to something different. 
and then we wouldn't be able to display all those countries. So there's different ways to fix this. One way is to make a copy in order to save it for later. So I'm going to create this copy up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a duplicate here. So I need to use an empty parameter and right up above here, I'm going to create another copy of countries. So we'll just say copy countries is of type I country. And for this one, I'm going to set an empty array. And then I can say this dot copy countries is equal to this dot countries. And then down below here, I can say this dot countries is equal to this dot copy countries, which is going to contain the entire list of countries that we originally got back. So it looks like I have this ending curly brace right here that should not be here. It should be like this. Okay, now I'll save that. Okay, so we go over here, we'll click this load countries, and we get our countries with our sorting. So I'm going to sort for just European countries, and now we get only European countries. Okay, I'm going to click all countries, and it's going to show me all the countries. And now I'll click population greater than a million, and population is shown greater than a million.